This lecture will cover uh, some brief, uh, a brief overview of philosophy, what it means, uh, what exactly it is, and a little bit of how to do it. So we're just going to dive right in. So when we talk about philosophy, it's important to understand that philosophy is a discipline of study. Okay. Um, here in a little bit, we'll talk about, you know, what philosophy isn't, and we'll talk about the difference between philosophy as a discipline and philosophy as, uh, as a sort of a worldview or a way of looking at the world. But when we're talking about philosophy proper, we're talking about philosophy as a discipline of study that's, I mean, similar to math or chemistry or English or accounting, um, a discipline of study that involves its own uh, vocabulary, its own history, its own um, relevance to certain other concepts and to culture. So this uh, philosophy is a discipline in and of itself. So keep that in mind because that will help us to distinguish it from our own personal philosophies later. It's not only just a discipline, it is a special kind of discipline. It's a second order discipline. And the reason it's called second order is because it undergirds all other disciplines. And we'll talk about that here in a second, but it's, it's the same as other disciplines in that it's a discipline, but it's different in that it's second order, meaning it's, it undergirds or it provides a foundation for it informs other, other disciplines. And I'll show you how that is here uh, in a little bit. The word philosophy comes from two Greek words, uh, philein, which means to love. Um, you can remember that because uh, if you think about the city of brotherly love is Philadelphia. So you see that P-H-I-L uh, root there is uh, means love in, in Greek. So Philaean means to love and Sophia means wisdom. So kind of interesting, um, philosophy doesn't just mean, uh, you know, thinking really hard and getting really confused about things. Um, a philosophy really is about the pursuit of wisdom. And that's kind of what this next definition is about. Um, philosophy can be defined as the attempt to think rationally and critically about life's most important questions in order to obtain knowledge and wisdom. So there is a goal in mind. It's not just sitting and thinking and, you know, getting lost in your, in your thoughts. There is a goal in mind. And the goal is to be rational and critical about a certain subject matter. And the subject matter is life's most important questions. When we talk about most important questions, we're talking about those big questions deep down, like, what what is our purpose in life why are we here um what happens after we die those kinds of what's the right thing to do those kinds of questions okay so uh the goal is to think rationally and critically about those types of questions and uh with the overarching goal of obtaining knowledge and wisdom if um if we do philosophy this helps us and if we if we pursue it with this in mind it helps us form an ordered set of propositions that we believe. This is, if we have this, this is a rationally justified true worldview. And we all know people that are really, have, have really interesting ways <laughs> of looking at the world. Um, and we kind of look at them maybe sometimes and think, wow, okay, that's a different way of looking at things, right? Um, and some people, it just seems, uh, doesn't it, that some people have better ways of looking at the world than other people do. And I suspect that's because the people that have better ways of looking at the world are people that have a more ordered, rationally justified, true worldview. So in other words, their worldview really does match with reality more than someone else's worldview. Usually people's worldviews, their ways of looking at the world, if they don't match with reality, they're hard to get along with. Um, they're hard to have conversations with because they come to conclusions about things that just that just don't that seem random to us because they don't match with reality. They don't have a good um, justification for thinking what they think. Well, philosophy, when we pursue it, when we pursue to try to think rationally and critically about life's important questions, that will. Uh, leave us with that will result in us having 
a true worldview, one that matches with reality, and one that we can justify, one that we have reasons for. And then I think this creates a stable person. It creates a reasonable person. It creates a person whose ideas are lasting and can have an impact because they have reasons for what they think and because their ideas are easier able to be communicated uh, because they match with reality a little better. Okay, philosophy also helps us formulate and defend arguments and explain truth. So if we were trying to be that person who's going to um, change the world with ideas, who's going to advance ideas, who's going to create the world that we think ought to be in place, um, sometimes we're going to have to argue for it because, because people look at the world from different viewpoints, then we're going to have to uh, make a case for why we think it ought to be one way and not the other. So philosophy or components of philosophy will help us do that because there are right ways and wrong ways to think and right ways and wrong ways to make an argument, an effective argument about something. So philosophy has tools that help us build a case for what we think. Um, there's a famous philosopher he's living now, Alvin Plantinga, um, that said, philosophy is thinking hard about something. And of course we know that he means more than that, but thinking hard about something involves time, involves effort, uh, it involves a lot of focus on trying to look at various aspects of a particular thing and philosophy will help us do that. Philosophy is uh, very, because of this, because we have to argue and sometimes defend our own arguments, our own ideas, philosophy is connected closely to language and communication. The better you are at um, having reasons for what you think and the better you are at thinking through things from other people's point of view as well as your own, the better you, you'll be able to communicate. Um, it will introduce a, a whole new way of communicating and speaking with others um, that I think will be re really useful for that. So now we have to talk about, well, exactly how do we do this? <laughs> um, the way that we start doing a philosophy is that philosophy really is rooted in an attitude or uh, and an approach of wonder. Um, this is not my own thought. This is actually a thought from way back, um, a quote from Plato. He said at one point, wonder is the feeling of a philosopher and philosophy is rooted in wonder. Aristotle also said at one point, for it is owing to their wonder that people both now begin and at first began to philosophize. So both of these, and these are like the heavy hitters, you know, of philosophy, and both of them um, acknowledge that the starting point of philosophy is this attitude of wondering about things. It's really difficult to think about something thoroughly if you are not interested in it or if you think that um, you already know everything about it. That's really difficult to think hard about something in that in, in that context. And so if you can foster in yourself an attitude of wonder, then this will allow you to examine something a lot more closely. Um, Another reason why this attitude is key is that, um, <laughs> excuse me, is that if you approach from, if you approach asking these questions about these big questions of life, if you approach them with um, with an attitude of wonder, this will automatically help you to counteract and to, to, to try to avoid any um, preconceived notions or stereotypes that you have about a particular topic. So if you approach it with an honest attitude of questioning and searching for answers, then um, there's less there's less of a chance of, for you to fall into any kind of stereotype ruts that you already have in your mind, um, which is a good thing. Sometimes stereotypes are true, but sometimes they're not, and so it's good to assess them from the from the very beginning. Um, also, if you approach this with an attitude of wonder, you you can get the best shot at objectivity. So we're trying to be um, as objective as we can, knowing that we all come from our own you know perspectives on things. Um, we we all uh, come from a certain a certain viewpoint on these things, and to try to 
see things from as wide of a viewpoint as possible so that we can get the most information and be the most reasonable. Um, if we approach it from an attitude of wonder, then that really will help us to ask the right questions so that we get at the right information. In other words, not just our information that we already know or that we're familiar with or comfortable with, but any information that's going to help us think through the subject at hand. Um, along with that, if we approach it from an attitude of wonder, we also will be able to arrive at a more thorough conclusion because we're asking more questions, we're looking at more material, and that conclusion is probably going to be more thorough, more reasonable, and easier to communicate to other people. And finally, these questions we're asking and the things that we're talking about are very foundational, very deeply set in our minds and in our beings and in you know, our existence, the way that we live. And those are, and they're really important questions. They very much guide who we are and, and, and how we respond to the world, how we respond to others. And those are important. And it just seems that to do justice to that task, to do justice to that material, we ought to stop and take some time. We ought to be careful to ask questions, careful to wonder about things, careful to question our own viewpoint. Uh, we may be right, but we won't really know that until we question it and examine it. Speaking of questions, um, in case you're still kind of wondering, okay, but what exactly do philosophers do? <laughs> they ask questions about meaning, they ask questions about knowledge, and they ask questions about how to live. And basically all of philosophy, um, even in its various, um, its various, uh, uh, branches all have to do with these three categories, questions about meaning, questions about knowledge, and questions about how to live. So in case you're still wondering why you should care about philosophy, um, philosophy does deal with really foundational questions and ideas. Like I just said before, these ideas shape us and they shape society. Um, they shape the way that we interact with, uh, with one another. And so this is a really big deal. Um, this, this shapes the world that we live in. And so the answers to these questions and our communication about these answers are really important um, and, and, and shape the world we live in. Even if we don't engage in them, other people are, and we live in the world with them. And so we ought to care about how this subject is approached. Also, we ought to care because philosophy is the discipline that undergirds other disciplines. Okay, by undergird, I mean it comes underneath and supports Okay, that means that it affects your thinking and your understanding in other areas. Uh, especially, this is especially helpful when it comes to an academic um, course of study where. Um, you kind of go from one class to another, and those classes might be in completely different disciplines. In the fact, they usually are. And it's difficult sometimes to kind of shut your brain off in one <laughs> discipline and then wake it up for another one. Um, it's, it's difficult to go between class uh, and especially when you add in a family and a, you know, a social life and a job. I mean, um, it's difficult to kind of keep, keep the categories straight. And what ends up happening is to survive, we kind of put all of these categories, each of our classes, each of the sections in our life, we kind of put them in compartments and we only deal with, you know, one or maybe two compartments at a time. So um, philosophy though, since it runs through and underneath pretty much everything else, then it helps to sort of break down those barriers between those compartments. And so this is a really important thing for why we, you should care about philosophy, because this will help sort of tie your life together in a way um, between your classes and your personal thoughts on the world, your job. Um, you'll see threads of what we're talking about sort of woven throughout the different parts in your life. And that actually makes a lot of other areas of your life make more sense when you can think about these things and have answers to these things. So this is what we're going to be. Um, this is what we're going to be looking at. So uh, just to kind of sum up, I mean, the purview of philosophy based on what we've discussed so far is that philosophy includes uh, and deals with all virtually all areas of life. Um, what we think about the world, how we act, how we interact with other people. And it definitely involves all areas of thought um, about meaning, about definition, um, and then about action. So uh, the study of philosophy is, is really, 
really important in this way. So hopefully now you know a little bit about what it is and a little bit about sort of how, how to do it.